Well, good morning, everyone. Great to be with you this morning. My name is Wade. I'm one of the pastors here at Stony Plain Alliance Church. We're so glad you're here, whether you're in the room or joining us online. A very special welcome to you from wherever you happen to be in the world today. Apparently, that could be Marmot Basin. That could be Cancun. That could be Acapulco. Thanks for the messages, for everyone's excuses for why they couldn't be at church today. We'll let you pass on this uh, Easter Sunday. That's the end of the March break. It's so good to be with you. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, we talk about this all the time at this church. Whether you're investigating Jesus, wondering about Jesus, have been following, following Jesus for many years, you're in the right place today. And it's our privilege to continue to talk about and introduce each other to the one who has truly set us free from sin and death, the one who has risen, who is Lord, and is transforming the world all around us one life at a time. It's our privilege to speak of him often, and that's what we're all about, fullness of life for everyone, as we practice the way of Jesus together. You know, every so often you come across a story in which somebody has completely defied the odds. It was a number of years ago now, there was a guy you probably haven't heard of. Uh, His name was Lee Caps, and he did something that many thought was absolutely impossible. You see, Mr. Caps was invited to go for a plane ride with a pilot friend of his. And so they took off in this really small aircraft. It was a float plane, actually, on the West Coast. And they, when they got up to cruising altitude, his pilot friend had a massive heart attack and died in the seat. Now, Lee Caps had never flown before and didn't know what to do. So what he did do is kind of pushed his friend off the controls, grabbed the microphone, and just cried out for help. Now, there was an air traffic controller in the area, and he said, Hey, Lee, I understand you're having a bit of a problem here. Uh, good news, great news. I'm not only, I not only can guide you, I'm a flight instructor. Would you care for a flying lesson? And Lee, being otherwise unoccupied at the moment, said, Sure, why not? Tell me everything you know. And so the air traffic controller gave him a few basics to do and what to keep the airplane in control and talked him through some basic maneuvers. And then finally, the air traffic controller said, hey, Lee, one way or another, you're going to land because there's only so much fuel and you have to land this thing right now. This is your only hope of survival. And so he starts talking Lee into coming in for a landing. The first time he tried to land on the water but couldn't manage that, so Lee lined up the plane and headed toward the landing strip. And it was not the most graceful approach, as you can probably imagine. Kind of looked like an intoxicated seagull coming down out of the sky. The landing was anything but smooth, but Lee Caps landed the plane and miraculously walked away with just a few bumps and bruises. Afterwards, the press had obviously come to the scene wondering what was going to happen. They asked the air traffic controller whether he thought an untrained person like Lee Caps really had any shot at all at at landing that plane and walking away. The air traffic controller looked at the guy in the press and he said, I knew it was a long shot, and Mr. Lee Caps has defied all the odds. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but there are people who are odds makers by profession. People who work in insurance or they're casino operators or owners, maybe stockbrokers to some extent. There are people who make their living sorting out the sure shots from the long shots. People who specialize in figuring out odds and advising others where to place their investments. And a lot of times, the odds makers are right. Tight formulas, precedents set by past situations, or just kind of having a sense about how things are going to roll. A sense about how life works and betting on the sure thing. No question There are things in life, many things, that roll out exactly as predicted. But then every so often, someone defies the odds and does something truly remarkable. I think the odds makers would have been wrong about Lee Caps if there was bets being placed that day. No way he should have been able to land that plane, but he did and he walked away. And the reality is that if you were a betting person in Jesus' day, you would have placed a lot of money on the odds of Jesus staying dead. I mean, to witness the events of Good Friday and think anything else, you would actually have to be a little bit crazy. You see, on Good Friday, we see Jesus tortured. We see him beaten. We see him crucified. We see a a, a sword, a spear go into his side and stab him. Blood and water flows. He's crying out his last breath. 
He's giving up his spirit. We see him even through Holy Saturday taken down from the cross and placed in a tomb and a large stone rolled in front of that tomb, in front of that cave. From that vantage point, right, people don't recover quickly from that kind of event, right? Like in life. And in all of human history, no one had been crucified, pronounced dead, buried in a tomb, only to emerge alive again. The odds, friends, I'll just say it, were squarely against the resurrection ever happening. And it's why a lot of people don't believe today. It's like that stuff just doesn't happen, except when it does. Except when it does. I mean, look at the encounter in this text between the angels at the tomb and a group of women. The angels say to the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? And I always thought, because we're in a graveyard. Like, that's kind of where you go for these things. These angels are like, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. You can look back through the Gospels. And on a number of occasions, Jesus outright tells his followers about the kind of death he is going to suffer, and then he is going to rise again. And almost every time the Bible says, the disciples say, we have no idea what he's talking about. They don't understand. Why? Because that's the kind of thing that just doesn't happen. This is in the book of Mark. It records that Jesus said to his disciples, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask Jesus about it. I imagine those first followers of Jesus hearing him talk like this and kind of looking at one another wondering, hey, is Jesus doing the parable thing again? Is this like a lesson for later? You go ask what he means. No, you go ask what he means. No one wants to get the straight goods, what Jesus is talking about, because no one wants to be the idiot that believes Jesus is actually going to rise from the dead. Like, actually, physically. Why? Because the odds are against that ever happening. So the women were looking into an empty tomb and realized that Jesus had actually pulled off the very thing he said he would. And he had risen. And he was alive. So they ran to tell the 11 apostles, those who were left, those closest followers of Jesus, and report what they had seen. And the scripture says, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense to them. I mean, brilliant, honestly. If this isn't a perfect snapshot of male-female communication in life, like, I don't know what is. It's here, it's been happening for centuries. What do you mean the tomb is empty? Yeah, we know Jesus said he would rise again, but seriously, you surely can't, you surely have to be imagining things, making stuff up in your head. Now, while this stimulating conversation is happening between a group of women and the apostles, Peter decided to run over to the tomb and have a look for himself. He arrived, looked inside, saw the burial clothes, no body in the burial clothes, and left, wondering to himself what had happened. Because it can't possibly be true. It can't possibly be true what Jesus said would happen. And there's no way the women are right on this one, and no way they would be first. But they were. So Peter says, I'll need to think about this for a while and maybe come up with a sensible explanation. And yet, friends, in the days that followed, it would become undeniably clear what had actually happened. Yes, Jesus had been beaten and tortured. Yes, he had been spit on and a crown of thorns was placed on his head. Yes, he was crucified on a cross and died a horrible death. He was buried in a tomb and a stone was placed at the entrance Yes, there was pain and despair that seemed to consume all hope. But then, against all odds, Jesus broke through the darkness and overcame the power of sin. He triumphed over death by rising again to life and forever opening the way of relationship and renewal between God and people. Yes, everyone, everyone was betting against Jesus. But Jesus has never cared about what people say is unlikely or impossible. Amen? He is the God who always keeps his word. And if he's saying he's going to rise from the dead, then you can bet your life on the fact that it's going to happen. He said it would happen, it did happen, and he's still alive today. You think about this. Have you ever wondered why the stone was rolled away from the entrance of the tomb? 
You know, I always grew up thinking that the stone was rolled away so that Jesus could do what? So he could get out, right? Get out of the tomb. It kind of makes sense. It's like they didn't have garage door openers or auto doors or anything else like that. So they had angels who would roll the stone away and he would walk out. And it kind of made sense to me. But that makes absolutely no sense to me now. Because there is no rock on this planet that could contain the resurrected Jesus. In fact, in Matthew's gospel, it's very clear that Jesus rose from the dead, was out of the tomb, no longer there, and then the stone was rolled away. Jesus did not have to stand there knocking to be let out. He's already out of the tomb, and the stone gets rolled away. See, the stone was rolled away, was not rolled away for Jesus to get out, but for people to go in and see that he's not there. It was opened as evidence. You can go in and see for yourself. The tomb was opened so that there would be, a wit- there would be witnesses to the most unbelievable, history-shaping, life-transforming truth that we could ever encounter, that Jesus has defeated sin and death, that we can be forgiven and free, and we can worship into that truth with all of our hearts for all of our days for all eternity. The empty tomb where a crucified Messiah had been placed was opened, not for him to get out, but for you and I to make our way in and discover that there is nothing, nothing, nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. In this Easter Sunday, there are hundreds of millions of people bearing witness to that fact. That there is an empty tomb that bears witness to that fact. There were eyewitnesses to Jesus' resurrection who wrote down the record and it's been preserved for us to this very day in the Bible. Beyond that, millions of people every year all over the world experience inner spiritual transformation when they begin to trust and follow this risen Christ. We've seen it right here in this church in the last few weeks. Just last Sunday, we had 10 people come and stand up here on this platform and then go down into the waters of baptism. Why? To identify with the truth in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that because he is raised, we can be raised to brand new life. And it continues to baffle people who think this whole deal about resurrection should have died out a long time ago. But it won't. Why? Because it's true and Jesus is alive. And that is the power of God's love for you and me. And you need to know the reason that we exist as a church is to introduce people to a God that would overcome every barrier. Cross any chasm, span any distance, and pay any price so that you could experience true life in him. We're about fullness of life for everyone. And so the question this morning is, are you really living into fullness of life? Do you know what it is to live in resurrection power, not just willpower, when you're seeking to overcome the difficulties of life, when you're seeking to face the challenges and and the things that are beyond your control, and all the willpower in the world can't seem to make that thing better? I mean, what is your against the odds situation that you're in right now? What is the thing you're up against, up against relationally, emotionally, in your family, in your work, in your school, just even within your own heart? What is your up against the odds situation right now where all the willpower in the world isn't making it better? What is your against the odds situation? Have you ever invited the resurrected Jesus into that situation to do for you, what he did 2,000 years ago in coming out of that tomb with resurrection power. See, you don't have to face the challenges of life alone. You don't have to walk into the difficulties and the darkness by yourself just trying to make things work. We're here to tell you today that because Jesus is alive, there is tremendous hope for the next breakthrough that your heart is longing for. And when we submit those things to Jesus, we're submitting those into his timing, into his way. We're also submitting it to his power. What kind of power? The kind of power that overcame sin and death itself. You see, your greatest enemy, your greatest enemy has already been defeated. The power of sin has been broken. The power of death, you no longer have to be afraid. So where do you need resurrection power today? What's the area of your life where you're willing to say, I'm done doing it on my own. I can't just muscle through this anymore. I'm ready to trust the risen Christ to do the unimaginable in my life. You see, it's one thing to be against the odds kind of people about Jesus' resurrection. 
but to embrace that and then apply that into the against the odds situations of our life absolutely changes everything. And every single person here in the room that's joining us online, you have an opportunity today to not go it alone, but to invite the resurrection power of Jesus into the space of your life where death seems to be reigning, where sin seems to be most powerful, and see what God can do in transforming your life. I've talked to a lot of people over the last number of weeks, and one of the themes that keeps coming up is, you know, I would follow Jesus, but I just kind of got to get my life together first. You know, I would absolutely, but I've got addiction issues. I've got family issues. I've got work issues. I've got all these issues. And okay, here's the deal, Wade. As soon as I get all that cleaned up, I will be an appropriate follower of Jesus. I'm like, Jesus doesn't want appropriate followers. He wants sold out, abandoned, desperate followers who cling to him for everything they need and find that he is enough. And so friends, today, all of your willpower, your striving to just make it better on your own can end because there is an empty tomb that says, this to, that says the truth to you. Jesus is ready to meet you today with resurrection power. Will you trust him? Will you trust him in that area of your life where you think it's absolutely insurmountable? As part of this service, once we get to the end, there's prayer teams available. There's opportunity to be ministered to, so keep that in mind. Matt's going to talk about it at the end as we have a prayer corner. People will pray with you. This can be an absolutely memorable Easter Sunday for you, both here in the room and online. You can, not, you can choose today. You can make the decision to say, Jesus, I'm done with my own striving. I cannot make my life work. I can't land the plane. I can't. And invite Jesus to be the Lord and leader of your life because he is not here to punish you. He is here to overcome the chasms with his love to invite you into a relationship of wholeness. Maybe at the depths of all of the things that you're experiencing, what you really want most is to know that you are loved eternally. And God wants to speak that word over you. So would you let us minister to you? Wherever you're against the odd situation is right now, Jesus cares. He's with you. And you can pray and you can invite. Even if you've never followed him before, chosen to give your life to him, this can be the day. There is good news for you. The enemies have been defeated. Christ is alive and he is here reaching to you by name. Now this may seem too good to be true and almost unbelievable to comprehend, but it's true. Worship team, why don't you come on up? You're going to lead us here in a minute. It may seem too good to be true and unbelievable to comprehend, but friends, it's true. And it can only be true because Jesus is alive and against all odds, Christ is risen. Amen? Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Let's stand and sing to that truth.